Hey guys, DMS here. Today I have for you this review of the Sivga Phoenix. Let's check it out. All right, so I'm sure many of you saw the unboxing of this video, and I'm gonna go on and say if you really like this headphone, turn off this review, just keep enjoying your headphone because I don't have too many positive things to say about it. Some positive, but don't let that change your opinion. If you like this headphone, Turn this off, live in bliss, keep enjoying your headphone. That's what matters. Now for everybody who hasn't bought this yet, I'm gonna share my opinions on it. Now, keep in mind these are my opinions. It doesn't mean that I'm right or wrong. It doesn't mean that this isn't right for you. I will have the headphone linked in the description if you wanna check it out. But other than that, let's get into it. Now before that though, do me a favor. If you like audio, click the subscribe button down below. It helps support the channel and make videos like this possible. It only takes you a second and I greatly appreciate it. Okay, build, nothing special. Uh, it's built a little bit like the Cindy Iva. It's definitely a headphone from a Chinese OEM. You can find the Cindy Ivas for $150 on Alibaba. This is pretty much from the same OEM, it has to be. Uh, not necessarily a bad thing, but I wouldn't expect the build to last an exceptionally long time. It doesn't feel particularly poorly built, but there's a lot of potential points of failure on this headphone. Now, I am glad that it's made out of decent materials though. Uh, metal all the way around. There's this kind of compressed wood. It's either some sort of compressed wood or it is plastic made to look like wood, but I think it's some sort of actually like compressed wood. Pads are very similar to the IVA, but instead of oval, they are round. The memory foam is really nice, and the pad size is okay as far as the uh, diameter is concerned, but the depth is nowhere as deep as it should be. So they're not particularly comfortable on that front after a few minutes, and the headband actually doesn't go up high enough. So I just end up with this metal sitting on my head. For a lot of people, the clamp pressure will probably be a problem out of the box. You can reduce this obviously, and it'll wear in over time, but it's not a particularly comfortable headphone. Uh, the cable is dual two and a half millimeter entry. Uh, it does sit pretty securely in there. The cable is nothing special, but it's nothing bad. It seems like it would be reasonably durable. No complaints on that front. It's a very easy to power headphone. You can power off a phone, a laptop. You can plug it up to an amp if you want to, uh, but it really doesn't take much to drive this thing. It's very low impedance, so you're not gonna really get the benefit of tubes. Tube amps seem to distort with this because it is such low impedance. It's an open back dynamic. The pads cannot be easily replaced because they have proprietary ring on here. So maybe if you were to cannibalize this ring out of it, you could reuse that and put some kind of different pads on it. If you do take these off, by the way, you have to twist them until they ah, click. There we go, which does take quite a bit to do. Okay, let's talk about sound. I haven't decided if I'm gonna show measurements of this thing or not because obviously I'm not running a perfect measurement rig. I'm upgrading my rig in the near future to something that is actually gonna have a uh, simulated ear canal. So that'll be in the next month or so. Until then, um, these respond really weirdly. So they do have some extra bass in some areas, uh, but not in sub bass. In sub bass, they roll off really early. Mid bass in these is really, really bloated and muddy. Now, all of the sound characteristics that I'm about to describe, they do go away after you use the headphone for a long time. You get that brain burn in. Uh, burning in the headphone itself, though, does absolutely nothing. I've let it sit for days and days and days, uh, blasting both music and all different types of noise, not to the point of distortion, uh, but just enough to that it's certainly getting used and it doesn't measure any different, it doesn't sound any different. It's entirely brain burn in. If you're getting used to this thing and it's sounding better, it's because you're having brain burn in which isn't a bad thing, but it means you're getting used to the sound. And once you do accommodate to the weird sound of this headphone, you can get some pretty good uh, tracks out of it. There are times where songs sound really nice after my brain is adjusted to its weird sort of tonality. The problem though, is that when I take them off and I hear what the world around me sounds like, it almost sounds like reality is broken and I have to readjust after listening to this. Uh, because there is some really weird stuff going on with that mid bass boost and a boost through the lower mid range. There's kind of a hump there. Uh, and the treble all seems to focus in somewhere to one sort of a peak, like a one note treble. Yet everywhere around there is significantly lower than this lower mid range bump. So what we get is a very warm but muffled sounding vocal that's still sibilant at the same time. Now, like I said, once you get used to it, this all kind of seems to fade in the background, but the first 30 minutes or so of wearing it are very difficult for me to get past these faults. And I don't feel like I should have to try and rely on brain burn in to use a pair of headphones, especially if I wanna to listen to speakers or another pair of headphones afterwards. Just everything sounds wrong 
um, going back and forth. Headphones that are normally great sound really weird after wearing these because my brain has gotten used to the weird frequency response. And likewise, when I wear a really good pair of headphones, I almost feel relieved because it's like stepping back into a breath of fresh air. I'd say this is actually pulling out a reasonably impressive amount of low level detail, not anything in the levels of like macro detail, uh, but it is getting there a little bit, uh, but nowhere near as detailed as like a Sundara or even an HE400. Though those have their own faults, they trade blows back and forth. Uh, I don't think that this has really many other redeeming features personally. Uh, I did buy this out of pocket. I'm going to be returning it um, because I bought several other headphones recently also that I like quite a bit more that cost less than this. This costs more than the Tiger 300R, the HD6XX, the HD560S, and another headphone that I'm giving a strong recommendation to next week, but it doesn't outperform really any of them. If you want something really weird, I would say this is the equivalent to a more open sounding AudioQuest Nighthawk, uh, but maybe less dark. It's just not for me. Comparatively, I wanted to take time to find what track sounded good or bad on this since it seems to go all over the place. And interestingly enough, it seems like better produced tracks are the ones that seem to sound worse. Uh, especially when I go to uh, things with lots of dynamic range, like on vinyl, I feel like you can really tell the compression of the headphone. Uh, though it does stage well, imaging is um, more precise than a 6XX, but less precise than most cheap planars and some other dynamics like DT880, Tiger 300R. But interestingly enough, the more detailed, the better produced a song was, the more it seemed to fail with this headphone strange tuning. Whereas tracks that were very uh, compressed, tracks that are um, not extremely well produced, a little bit busier, uh, those seem to play better to this headphone for some reason. I assume that's because those tracks are a bit more distorted and are able to kind of push up the gaps in the uh, upper mid range to kind of balance things out a little bit. Future DMS here, I'm editing the video and there's one thing I forgot to put in and that was that every time I would sit down, I would think I need to use the Civica Phoenix, I need to you know, evaluate, I need to spend more time with it so I can uh, review it and I did. Uh, but a lot of headphones, I come home from work, I find myself wanting to put them on, wanting to listen to them so that I can evaluate them. And the Phoenix, no matter what, I never found myself wanting to use them. And when I was using them, I just wanted the experience to be over. I find in the reviewing process that says a lot when you find you have a product in and you don't want to use it, when you don't want to listen to it because every time you do, it's not a pleasant experience. A lot of times it is easy to tell in that moment if a product is going to be uh, headed on the right track or not to being a good product. When you get something in that's exciting, when you get something in that sounds good, you want to listen to it. You actively want to use it more. And this one, I just didn't. Okay, back to the real video. That is my take on the Sivga Phoenix. I'm sure there will be people out there who are not happy with my impressions of this headphone or my review of it, but keep in mind this is my opinion. I tend to like things that are more either relatively neutral or have very slight leanings. I don't like very extreme headphones and just the, the big mid bass bloat on this is too much for me. So that's pretty much gonna be it. If you like this video, please leave a like down below, a comment letting me know what you wanna see in the future. If you wanna get active in the community, you can at forum.hifiguides.com. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until the next one, guys. Peace.